CNN Business, 11th of October 2023, the globe will suffer significantly if China cuts off supplies of rare earth elements used to make chips. China leads the market because it does not care about contaminating the environment, even though rare earth is not uncommon but rather severely polluting. However, as the globe turns away from China, this is changing. China's foreign shipments of germanium and gallium, which are both necessary for the production of semiconductors, completely stopped just one month after the country declared it would limit its exports of these minerals. Although Beijing claims to have since issued some export licenses, the limitations serve as a clear message that China is prepared to use its potent weapon in the trade war over the future of technology. The restrictions followed restrictions on chip-making equipment shipments to China by the US, EU, and Japan, which aimed to deny China access to critical military technologies. It's too soon to say how stringent the regulations would be. However, Xiao Meng Lu, head of geotechnology at Eurasia Group, stated that if China ends up blocking a large amount of exports, it will cause a disruption in the supply chain for the immediate consumers for a short period of time. China produces the two elements with a monopoly-like effect. According to the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, it was responsible for 68% of refined germanium production and 98% of the world's output of gallium last year. According to Marina Zhang, an associate professor at the University of Technology Sydney, building an independent supply chain for gallium and germanium processing could require a staggering investment of over $20 billion, even if the United States and its allies have other options and its development can take years. Considering the environmental implications of their extraction and mining, refining technologies and facilities for processing gallium and germanium cannot be built overnight, the author stated in July. But doing so might be the only choice available. Zhang claims that although the minerals only make up a few hundred million dollars of the world's commerce, they are vital to the supply chains of the hundreds of billion dollar international semiconductor, defense, electric vehicle, and communications industries. The prevalence of rare earth, which isn't rare, in China For the past 10 years, at least, China has controlled the production of both elements. The silvery soft metal gallium is simple to cut with a knife. It is frequently utilized to create substances capable of producing radio frequency chips for satellite communication and mobile phones. Germanium is a strong, brittle, grayish-white metalloid used to make optical fibers capable of carrying electrical and light signals. Nature does not contain either by itself. Usually, they are created as a byproduct of mining more widely used metals, including copper, zinc, and aluminum. The materials processing can be expensive, technically demanding, energy intensive, and polluting, according to ING Group commodities specialist Eva Manthe. He explained that China's dominance in producing these two metals isn't due to their rarity but that the nation has maintained low manufacturing prices, making it impossible for producers in other countries to match China's competitive costs. Based on data from the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, China's output of low-purity gallium increased dramatically from 22 metric tons to 444 metric tons between 2005 and 2015. According to think tank analysts, China has established a commanding share of the world gallium output due to its leadership in the aluminum business. Furthermore, to increase output, the Chinese government has implemented strategic policies which require the nation's aluminum manufacturers to establish the ability to extract gallium. For this reason, producing gallium outside of China has become practically unfeasible in the last 10 years. Germany, Hungary, and Kazakhstan stopped producing gallium on a primary basis between 2013 and 2016. Germany declared in 2021 that prices would be rising and it would resume production. Other vendors, however, there are other sources. 
In 2022, Russia, Japan, and Korea collectively produced 1.8% of the world's gallium, according to the USGS. Tech Resources, based in Canada, is one of the biggest producers of germanium worldwide. Germanium alloys and compounds are also produced to a high standard worldwide by the American business Indium Corporation. The producers of both components are Umicor in Belgium and 5 Plus in Canada. But according to economic historian and chip war author Chris Miller, it would take time to bring online alternative sources of supply, he told CNN it could also be pricey. If China attempts to stifle supplies, international mining firms could enter the germanium and gallium market, according to Gregory Allen, director of Cheese's Wadwani Center for AI and Advanced Technologies. While it wouldn't happen immediately, some multinational mining and refining companies have expressed their intention to do so. Following China's announcement of export restrictions, the state-owned Russian corporation Rostec told Reuters in July that it was prepared to increase germanium output for domestic consumption. The Netherlands-based Nearstar also considered other projects involving germanium and gallium in Europe, Australia, and the US. According to Lou from Eurasia Group, gallium may be substituted for silicon or indium throughout the way for making process, even if customers run out of these materials. She also mentioned zinc selenide as a less effective but functional alternative to germanium in some applications. Growing costs recycling is an additional choice. The U.S. Defense Logistics Agency launched a recycling program for optical-grade germanium used in missile systems last year. One source of supply has already been identified, factory floor scrap. According to Lou, other military vehicles and retired tanks are other sources of germanium scrap. China sold neither germanium nor gallium outside of its boundaries in August. September could see a rise in the numbers as the Commerce Ministry said that some export permits for Chinese businesses had been obtained. According to Manthe, prices for the two components will probably increase at first. Gallium prices on Tuesday increased by over 17% from June 1 to 1965 yuan $269, per metric ton as reported by the Chinese metal trade website ebuyin.com. During that time, germanium prices rose by roughly 3%. Higher prices will lessen China's dominance in both markets by increasing competition and making production more cost-competitive in nations like Japan, Canada, and the US, Manthe added. Building processing plants will take time but supply chains and markets will adjust over time," he continued.